Good morning. My name is Lauren Kramer, and on behalf of High Point University's Alumni Association, I would like to welcome all of our High Point University family, our current students, our alumni, including Dr. Cubain, and the family and friends of those alumni who are no longer here to celebrate with us. Today, we will recognize and celebrate them in our memorial service, which is the culmination of our homecoming weekend. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, we come together today with spirits of gratitude and remembrance. We thank you for leading us all to High Point at some part of our journey in this lifetime. Although some of those lives are no longer with us on earth, we hold tight to their memory and today we will celebrate them. We ask that you be with us all as we depart campus today and until we meet again on this hallowed campus next year. We give all glory and honor to you, O Lord, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Locate in the pew one of the blue hymnals and turn to hymn number 577, God of Grace and God of Glory. I invite you to stand as we sing. <laughs> everyone so one thing before we all sit I have a couple announcements first I would like to talk about our offering this semester it is going to Angel Tree and Angel Tree is um, through Salvation Army sorry <laughs> through the Salvation Army we partner with them so that we can provide um, Christmas gifts for kids who aren't um, able to get them um, the second thing is that in front of you you will see prayer request cards um, where you can write down your prayer request and every um, sorry, every week at the Board of Stewards, we pray over them. So at this moment, I'd like to invite you to pass the peace. Say hi to somebody, tell them you look beautiful, share some love.
all would grab your bulletins from your pews and stand once more. We'll continue in worship with our call and response. And you can find that call and response on the inside of your bulletin. God who is behind us, before us, and with us, we give thanks for this moment of praise. We give thanks for familiar faces and places that have made us who we are. In this time and days to come, may we remember those who have gone on before us, those who have shown us the way. Renew us in this time, gracious God. Fill us with memories that lift us, with stories that hold us close to each other, and your love that grounds us in goodness. Bind us together once more, gracious God. Bind us to you through Christ. Bind us to one another through your Holy Spirit. Bind us to the mission of your kingdom. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. In just a minute, we will hear the names of those whom we love who departed us in the last year. In a few minutes, I'll also ask you to follow the liturgy that's in your program. But for right now, I'd ask for you to join me in prayer. Gracious God, it's good to be home. We thank you today for High Point University, a sacred place where each of us has experienced you in some way. We thank you this morning for the vision and the determination of the dreamers, the founders, and the creators of this institution. An institution that was made to honor you and to prepare men and women to follow your will, their dreams, and their commitment to serve. We thank you for the leaders of this place and ask that you give them the strength, the courage, and the vision to deliver and to continue to seek your will. We thank you for the students and families, the faculty and staff, and certainly the graduates, all who have aimed to serve you and glorified your name. God, in some way, High Point University changed all of us. And for all of us who lived here, studied here, and worked here, this is holy ground. We thank you for the people you put in our lives who have walked this ground with us. Your hand is on this institution. Surely your presence is in this place. Gracious God, it's good to be home. We come to you now, God, to thank you for the lives of High Point graduates who are no longer with us. We miss them. But we know that someday, in a great heavenly homecoming, we'll all be together again. And now I ask you to follow in the bulletin our responsive prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for these, your servants, whom we remember today. Grant us grace to follow them as they followed Christ. Bring us with them to those things no eye has seen, no ear heard, which you have prepared for those who love you. Gracious God, give us faith to look beyond the present age. Give us eyes to see that we are surrounded. Hear now the names of those whom we love who have departed within the last year. From the 1930s, 
Francis L. Reynolds. From the 1940s, William H. McKinney, Cleo Gullick, Margaret Wagner, Geneva L. Warren, Clifford E. Stanley, Josephine Goldston, Dina J. Marple, Nan B. Hartman, Clarence C. Heaver Sr., Alice C. Hobbs, Dr. P. Talmadge Lancaster, Anna M. Clark, Betty J. Hewitt, Elizabeth Myers, Arthur B. Williams III, Vista J. Faust, Gurney L. Stroud, Jr., David N. Pulliam. From the 1950s, Reverend Joe L. Irvin, Frank R. Vondrell, Margaret White, Mary L. Boyan, Joanne Dunn, Robert D. Lisson, Vlad S. Lawson, Margaret Peeler, William L. Sowers, Dr. Lacey M. Venable, William J. Ways Sr., C. Kenneth Ingram, Edward Sueta Sr., Reverend Carl Barr Jr., Linwood T. Carter, Oren W. Morton, Nancy Smith, Rebecca A. Turner, Leo A. Welch, Constance J. Christie, Dr. Frederick G. Hasty, Annie L. Hopkins, Sam G. Casayas, Reverend G. Simmons Robichaud, Reverend James C. Smith, Mary E. T., Edna Allred, Margaret M. Tavoletto, Robert D. Davidson. Continuing the 1950s, Faith Davison, Janine Fisher, Jack B. Powell, A. D. Sale, Dorothy Bunn, David Wilburn K. Everhart, Francis C. Ingram, Joseph G. Lee, Billy O. Stutz, Shirley Blakely, Roger F. Davis, Clayton H. Gardner, Bobby Hunsucker Hayes, Gaynell Kaiser, Ralph V. Moran, Thomas W. Shelton, Priscilla Tabor, John B. Beasley, Benny O. Koppel, William G. Craig, Robert L. Foster, H. Howard Holbrook, Jr., Reverend James E. Smith, Reverend Pinckney G. Deal III, Warren E. Hamilton, Joan Tanner, Luther J. Sanders, Charles
Charles S. Vaughn. From the 1960s, Reverend Corbin L. Cherry, Dan J. Fussell Jr., William T. Lore, Richard B. Mason, Duthie F. McMillan, Charles F. Price, Doris A. Whitehead, Francis Craddock, Lieutenant Commander Retired Thomas W. Freeman II, Reverend Walter H. Schneck, Leoma Benson, Sonia Bishop, Thomas J. Bivens, Jr. D. Donald Cashin, Charlotte Talbert, Stephen M. Kite, David F. Rowe, N. Max Schoeth, Charles L. Wisner, Donald M. Swiggin, Sr., Connie G. Myers, Billy G. Walsh, Frederick A. Benoit, Dr. Kenneth C. Elmore. Continuing the 1950s, Clyde E. Henderson, Marilyn Pointer, Albert W. Roush, Norma S. Sane, Earl Tysinger Jr., William F. Fanning, Larry A. Dunlap Sr., Reverend Talmadge F. McLean, Gary J. McMahon, Joseph B. Walker, Jane H. Blackwell, Phyllis M. Cassie, Walter A. Bragg Jr., Fred C. Hughes, H. E. Stevenson Jr., From the 1970s, Donald L. Davis, Barry J. Hall, Linda Church, Reverend Benjamin D. Killian, Judy Simmons, Donald L. Two, Karen Pledger, Michael E. Casey, Claire M. Miles, Leonard O. Bailey, Sue A. Bomboy, Curly Shaw, William M. Zydek, David L. Elkins, Harvey R. Perlman III, Rosa L. Buck, From the 1980s, Rhonda L. Cecil, Michael D. Cadle, Doris J. Warfield, Fred O. Berger, Laura C. Fiorio, Louis C. Nowicki, Dennis K. Stanfield, Tommy Robert M. Blinker III, Franklin D. Taylor, Timothy M. Curtis, Brenda C. Hemphill, Katrina Y. Brittenbaum, Shana T. Chief Johnson, Jeffrey P. Chomsky. Rebecca K. Davis, Terry B. Elliott. Rhonda 
Robert J. O'Brien Jr. Michael A. Bragg. Janice E. Tucker. From the 2000s. Kelly Ann Hale. Wayne E. Streeter. Nicholas Williams. Jimmy Allen Handy. Alan Carnes. D. Scott Forrester. Regina L. Cole. Christopher Rayner Johnson. Michael Shane Gordon. Rachel D. Logan, Ali R. Sandito. May we pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for these individuals with whom we have shared life, with whom on this campus we have walked the same ground. Let us live in the knowledge, God, that someday we'll be together again. Amen.
me in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this community that spans many, many decades. And thank you for this chapel here that has been a place where people can come and worship you together. I thank you for the lives that we remember today and for their families and their contributions both on this campus and around the world. And God, I thank you for empowering each one of us to carry your message and your grace and your amazing ministry out into the world and into this community. Thank you for everyone gathered here today and thank you for the celebration of the alumni. And I pray all of this in your name. And now may you join me for the Lord's Prayer, praying, Our Father, Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jason Statham, and I am a sophomore on the Board of Stewards. And I will be reading the scripture this morning, uh, coming from Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 through 26. You have not heard, you have heard that it was said to be those of ancient times. You shall not murder, and, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or a sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly while your accuser with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him. Or your accuser may hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you for that really heartwarming scripture reading, Jason. Um, delightful way for this service this morning. No, uh, you, you heard, if at the altar, you remember. If at the altar, you remember your neighbor. If at the altar, you remember your brother and sister. That's what we're doing. Uh, if at the altar, you remember. Something about altars, right? Uh, they make you remember. Something about altars, that thin place between you and God where it's like, oh man, I thought that was gone, but no, and now it's rushing back to me. Now, what do we do? Ten decades here of HBU graduates, alumni, friends, family, people we've shared life with, right? No, if at the altar you remember, uh, you remember them, and you know you're remembered through them. It's amazing. It's amazing how much we share life together. Uh, if at the altar you remember, how do we even begin to talk about things like this? People we've shared life with and then go on ahead of us. I, I think we talk about them, and we talk now, like Jesus might have, right? With grandness. This passage, if at the altar you remember, there's an altar, there's remembering, and there's your neighbor. How do you talk about these neighbors, these people who are with these family and friends? You do it with grandness. I don't know if you caught this in the passage this morning, right? It's, it's, it's Jesus doing what Jesus does. He's talking in, in huge terms. We were talking about this this past Wednesday, actually. Jesus, when he speaks and he's trying to get your attention, he speaks in exaggeration. He wants you to hear it's what's really important, right? So that could be about judgment. He, he's got these lines, right? It's a, that, if you, that if you judge a neighbor, you will be judged. If you call them fool, you'll be judgment to hell, hellfire. What's he doing there? He's like, listen up, this is really important. Do we take him literally or do we take him seriously? If we took him literally... I think there'd be a lot of us Christians missing one eye and one hand. If 
following him. No, he's saying you take him seriously. You listen to what's really grand here. And it's about our lives that are a part of one another and how much we belong to one another. Students are sick of hearing it, I know, but I'm going to keep saying it this year on and on again. And it's that if we do not have peace, it's we've forgotten we belong to one another. There's ten candles, right? Our lives right next to us right now, we belong to one another. How do you even begin to talk about such deep intimacy and how much we mean to one another? you got to use grand terms. It's like your own mom, right? Your mom is the best mom in the entire world. No one's better than your mother. How do you talk about someone you've shared life with? They're the best person in the entire world. You talk about them with such grandness. It's what it means. Take this seriously. We talk about these lives that we've had together. They're, they mean so much to one another. If at the altar you remember. And you remember so much when you come to altars. The altar. How do we talk about it? Talk about it the way Jesus would, right? Like at the altar. It's the oldest piece of furniture in the world. God creates the world and then puts an altar on it. It's a place where you and God run into each other again and again and again. An altar. I think about all these names that we read this morning. And I think about having been a pastor and spending time with people uh, at the end of their lives. And that's an altar. At that place between worlds, right? Between this one and the next. It's an altar. And you get that time with people and sometimes you get some regret. And sometimes you get some deep gratitude that you don't run into at any other place in life. That's an altar. You remember there. You remember what's most important. I think about some of you alumni when you come back to this campus. It's like an altar in some ways. You come back from this campus and it's this thin place. All these memories come rushing back, don't they? It's the things that are most important. They come back into your periphery and then right in front of your face. It's an altar. It's a thin place between you and God and those you share life with. Here's the thing, though, about church. Like, it's taken to a different degree. I think of this altar. I think of the number of things we do at this table. I think about breaking bread and having communion at this table. I think about the number of things that happen in this space. It's more than just a rushing back of memories. It's, it's almost a, it's a dangerous place. Like, altars make you remember. Altars make you remember who you're supposed to be. Like, you thought something was, was buried. And you come into church, and oh my goodness, this is what Jesus is talking about. If you come to the altar... Leave your gift because you're going to remember something. You're going to remember somebody. And it's going to come all rushing back. And you've got to do something about it. We do this in higher ed now. We don't, we don't so much talk about safe space anymore. People used to talk about safe space. President Graham probably likes this one. Like, there's no such thing as safe space. What there is in real life is brave space. There's places that you really want to go into. And it's not that you really want safe space. You want places that you're going to be transformed. Places where you have an honest moment, where you see yourself for who you really are and those around you. You don't really want safe space. You want brave space. You want transformative space. Woo! Chapels, man, those are brave spaces. You come into these kind of places and you remember who you are. You remember what's most precious in your life. What's that old cliche that it's well-worn but it wears well, that alters, they alter people? You come into these kind of places and your whole life's right before you. You can't have any more pretense anymore. It's just, it's real, it's raw. And the funny thing, that's like exactly what God wants, right? No pretense, no posturing, just some honesty, just some realness. I think probably one of the best things we do for this actually each year is at the beginning of Lent, right? We come into here, and what do we have done? It's a very odd and weird thing. What do we have done? We have ashes spread on our forehead, and we hear, from dust you come and dust you shall return. And it's one of the most honest moments of the year. My favorite photo from last year, the entire year, it's a picture of Reverend Andrew Williamson spreading ashes on President Nito Cobain's forehead, forehead in here last year. One of the most beautiful moments all year long. All of us who come forward and we have ashes spread on our forehead and remember who we are, that we are fragile, fragile people. We are all dust and yet we are precious in the sight of God. It's a moment of realness. We belong to one another. You may remember one of the first altars in history, right? It's Exodus 3. Moses, he's coming into the wilderness and he hears, Moses, Moses, take off your shoes for you are on holy ground. And he says, okay. 
well, what, do you, what do you want with me, God? And he says, well, I've heard my people's cry in Egypt. And you're supposed to go and call them and bring them out. And, you know, there's this moment of rawness and realness, right, that we have often if God calls our name. We go, no, 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 I, I, don't, I, don't speak, I don't speak so well, Moses says. And God says, well, I'll be with you. And then Moses says, okay. So I'm going to go back to Egypt, and I'm going to go liberate these people. Who, 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 should, I, who should I say is, is sending me? And God says, I am that I am. The God who has always been and always will be and who simply is. What is it saying? It's this God we meet in the very isness of our life. When we simply are. No posturing. No pretense. No nothing. Just a moment of honesty with us and God. When you come to the altar, you can't help but remember because they make you do so. so they're, they make you do so. They're transformative things. They're dangerous things. To say I te rayon means altar. Altar, place where we meet ourselves clearly and we see each other well. Altars, they change things, they transform us. Think about this weekend, right? Altars make you remember, they bring back some memory, they cause you to remember some of your favorite things in life and some of the best things in life. It's been fun to watch Homecoming this weekend and some people who come in here. I see Robbie, who's come here every year. He's come for this service, and he comes here and remembers his buddy Chad, who passed this year. There's something a little bit more incomplete about this place because Chad isn't here too, right? And you've got some of that. It's got this, how do you put it? Like It's like a, a bitter sweetness, this place that's full of love. And yet it's got some absence in it as well. How do we begin to talk about stuff like that? I wasn't quite sure how to do this, but it, it helped me this year in a strange way. This past year, one of, one of my best friends died, and, and I went to his funeral, and we talked about the pain that we experienced in his loss. C.S. Lewis put it this way. He said, like, when you lose someone you love, it, it's not like another person is gone. It's like, it's like your arm is gone. It's like you lose a very part of you. At the end of the day, my buddies and I, we were talking about this sense of absence. And we said, you know what, I'm not sure we'd have it any other way, though. Like it, the pain means that, that he loved us well. Like we loved him well. Like would we want to go without the pain on this one? No, I don't think we did. I think we wanted it. When it was a reminder that we're actually doing something right, that we're loving well, and that people are loving us in return. We're getting to experience life. It's very rawness and realness that our greatest desire is to love another and to be loved in return. And what is the cost of that? It is some pain, but it is actually a shadow side of love. What do we do without that? It brings us into the realness, the rawness of life, an actual altar again and again and again that we might be transformed more into the figure of who Christ is. We may be wounded, but oh my God, my friends, we become wounded healers in the process like him. Oh, altars alter us. They remind us of the deepest things of life and who we're supposed to be. We shouldn't go a day without coming to an altar. Where else in the world do we come and kneel and be reminded in whose image we are to be made? Whew. We need it. You don't get through it without some wounding, but oh, the wounds, they take you further on a journey to who you're supposed to be. If Exodus is important, some burning bushes, right? You remember this, Leviticus 13, right? Oh, you remember. Come on, all of you. You've read it this week, I'm sure. Leviticus 13. You don't just simply remember. You remember who you're supposed to be. And in that one, God says to him, you shall protect the stranger. Well, why? Oh, friends, because you were once strangers in a strange land. We come before the altar and we are not just reminded of the deepest things of life, we're reminded of who we're supposed to be. Oh, this journey of faith, these Christian vows that we take, take us in a place of not just remembering ourselves, but remembering the lives around us and further lives around us to whom we dedicate ourselves. It's serious business. It's a great journey. It calls us to who we're supposed to be. 
Its memory compels us out into the world. The altar reminds us. God's presence, it takes us further. Friends who are in, there to, in here today, friends and family, uh, we've been gathering in here on Sundays um, this, this semester, and all we've been doing are reading the Psalms. And coming up later this semester is Psalm 139. It's one of my favorites. It's the Lord who has searched you and known you, who knows you're rising up and you're falling down, the God who is ever acquainted with your ways, the God who knit you together in your mother's womb. The God who breathed into you and brought forth life. And the psalm goes on further and he says, Oh God, where can I run from you that you are not there? If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I make my bed in the heights of heavens, you are there. It's amazing. When we come to the altar, we don't just remember who we're called to be. We're reminded of who God is. No more sham and pretense of a God who would do our bidding, but a God who sees us and knows us and pursues us and will never quit calling your name. A God who makes you who you're supposed to be. Altars will change you indelibly and make you who you're supposed to be. Students have heard this, but I share it with some of you, faculty and staff and, and friends who are here today. And there's a student sitting about where Alex is right now. Uh, one Wednesday night when we were having chapel. And uh, uh, the student, at the end of service, I came back in and the student was sitting very still with, except her shoulders were going up and down. That means that she was either laughing or crying and I wasn't the former. And some students waved me over to come see the student and I, I came and sat down and, and she's like, I don't understand what's going on right now. See, Preston, I don't believe any of this stuff. But somehow I keep hearing this name, this thing of like, as if God's calling my name. And I said, oh, you're in so much trouble. Because once it starts, it never stops. It's the God who has searched you and known you. It's the God who puts you on your knees and then reminds you to get back up and go out and do extravagant things for this God in the world. To love way more than you thought you could because, oh, it'll be painful, but my goodness, it'll be good. For there's nothing that we can experience that God is not in God's own self on a cross with hands open, wounded for us, that we might become wounded healers. When I heard her say that, and I think about people who then surrounded her, and I think about us, I think about how much we desire a moment at the altar. I think about how we desire to be surrounded by people who have been altered themselves, who have been transformed and transfigured into a way of life, that they could not imagine before. What an incredible gift. We get to do this together. Will you join me in prayer? Gracious God, we come to this chapel and it's an altar. It's a thin place between you and us. It's a moment of rawness and realness. And it's precious. For you see us, and then because you see us, we see better. We see better about what our lives are and what they can be. For at the altar, we are remembered in the right way. We are put back together. We come home to ourselves, and we come home to one another. For we remember who you call us to be people of deep, incredible, abiding love, for we are reshaped and remade in your image. We are altered by your very presence in our lives. May it be so now and evermore. Amen. We invite you to stand, open your hymnal to 400, and let's end this beautiful service with one of the strongest hymns in our church's history.
Praise be to God. Thank you all so much for joining us here on this campus here at High Point University to celebrate the memories and the connections that each and every one of us have to one another, to this place that we call home. It is a homecoming because it's an opportunity for us to you know, really reflect and remember, to recognize those memories and those connections that we have when we leave this place, whether that be the moment we walked across that stage or today as we go back our separate ways around the globe that we take those memories and that spirit and who we are at High Point College or High Point University with us forever and for far beyond. I thank you for coming. I know and I, I bid my uh, greatest full heart today for you all to come back to be great advocates for our university and please stay connected to us. We want to continue to see this institution be blessed by God and see what it has in store for us. So thank you. Would you do me uh, a favor and give this uh, chapel and alumni choir a round of applause this morning? <laughs> you, know, you understand, some of them, this is waking up really early in the morning to help you worship this morning. Now may you remember this. That the Lord is for us, then who can be against us? For there is nothing, nor life, nor death, nor anything in between that can separate us from the love of Christ Jesus. Those that we have loved are in God's eternal care, and so are we now. They are new creations in Christ, and so are you in this very moment. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.